Welcome back to SoFlow TV again, everybody. It is your host with the most. Just go ahead and hit that subscribe button for me, please. No, really. Hit the subscribe button, please. And hit the thumbs up button so it helps the video to trend on YouTube so more people see it and more people engage the content. Anyhow, hey, man, we just went through like two years, two and a half years of this COVID corona stuff and everybody was on lockdown. But while that was happening, also... A lot of deportation activities had ceased or slowed down significantly. Well, as borders are opening, as the masks are coming off, all the places that deport are now ramping up their deportation proceedings once again. So places like Jamaica will start to see a whole lot more deportees coming into the country. I did not know. That in 2020, I believe, 791 deportees came from the United States of America alone. And if you notice, the U.S. never really publishes, oh, we're sending another plane to Jamaica. Oh, we're sending another 100 deportees to Jamaica. They never do. They just quietly send the deportees back. Not so much with the UK. The UK normally announces another plane is heading for Jamaica. And in this particular story, I found a story that was quite unique. And a brother that was caught up in situations that was beyond him. And now he is fighting. And I'm telling you right now, if he ends up in Jamaica with no one to care for him or help him, a lot of help. He is going to be a burden to the system. He is definitely going to be coerced and manipulated. And he might even end up losing his life. I don't know why they continue to do this. The UK had decided that anyone who came to the UK under a certain age group would be allowed to stay. No matter what trouble they got into. No matter the status of their paperwork. Right? But they've been reneging on that. They've been sending people anyways, regardless. And I said back then, when they said it, we want it in paper. We want it pen and paper, written as law. Because they can say something to you on Monday, and on Tuesday they'll turn around and say, well, show me where it's written in law. Word is wind. Here's the story. Urgent legal action has been launched to halt the deportation to Jamaica of a man with such severe learning disabilities that a judge found that he would struggle to survive if he was sent back to the country of his birth. This is what a judge that he went before said, that he would struggle to survive if he was sent back to the country of his birth. Well, most deportees struggle to survive, and, and they don't have any learning disabilities. The 34-year-old needs support. Here's, here's the details of his story, right? And I want you to leave your comment in the comment section below what you think, what proper course of action you think would best suit this case. The 34-year-old needs support with basic tasks from his mother and his sister, and is a suspected victim of exploitation. Let us explain. The case has parallels with that of Osime Brown. I don't know if you remember Osime Brown. Osime Brown was a young man with severe learning disabilities. He had gotten into a little bit of issues. Um, he was pretty much coerced into getting involved in the wrong company and doing the wrong things. You see, these children, right? When they're born with learning disabilities, autism, and all that other stuff, you have to understand that they don't develop at the same speed that normal children develop at. And it causes some kind of issue with them. Like, for instance, at the age of 17, 18, 19, you're going off with your peers. You guys are going to parties together. You guys are starting to date. Well, you've been dating since you were 14, 15, 16. Most people have your little girlfriend, but you've, you're, you're starting to seriously date at these ages. No one wants to go out with these people. I, and I say these people, and I don't say it in a bad way. I'm meaning people with disabilities. It's kind of harder for them. So they're seeing their peers meet milestones and go off into the world 
to form families of their own, go off into studying higher education, getting a degree, opening businesses, or going to college, start um, getting employment, gainful employment, and they're they're not able to do most of these things, right? So they hang around. And when they hang around, usually people who are involved in illicit or illegal activities can easily sway them. And they will go because they're looking for company. They're looking to belong. You understand? So this young autistic man, he's 34 years old, fam. 34. And he needs support from his mom and his sister on a daily basis just for basic tasks. This is coming from his court papers. The case has parallels with the Osimi Brown case. The young autistic man who was faced who was faced with deportation to Jamaica, but Osime actually won his right to remain in the UK after legal intervention. Now he is among dozens. This young person I'm talking about now, who's facing deportation, he's among dozens of people that's facing deportation back to Jamaica on a home office flight that was scheduled to fly out the 18th of May. We're in June. But lawyers lodged an emergency legal action on his behalf on Friday evening, hoping to stop his removal. The man is currently facing deportation. He has one custodial sentence. He was convicted. Listen to this, though. He was convicted of possession of a loaded handgun with intent to endanger a life in August of 2014 and handed several or seven year sentence in prison. Now, I know somebody is going to say, yeah, so he has learning disabilities and other issues and he needs the help of his mom and his sister on a daily basis to complete basic tasks. But he was found with a handgun. Now, you got to understand in the UK, a handgun is not that prevalent it's not like in the united states of america for instance i live in the south in the united states of america and i can tell you that in the south here almost everybody has a gun you know so this isn't the place where i advise somebody to come boast about hey me have my gun palm me boy me was shot you and these kind of things it could be seen as a threat and then somebody is standing their ground and blowing your head off because you reached into your pocket after saying, Oh boy, I may have my gun, palm me, me was shot, yo. Right? So I could imagine the yardies in the UK talking about their guns a lot. You know, the type that screw face on me, a gunman, bad man. They feel like they're living out the words to want a skeng song. You know? Uh, <laughs> I have to laugh because being overseas and seeing them in action. Is something funny. Everybody is a clansman, one done, gang man, gunman, bad man. It like they're really living in the song. And in reality, most of them are not. Right? But <laughs> anyhow, in the UK, the gunplay thing is not that up. So to find him with a gun, it's a serious issue. So the man is currently facing deportation with one custodial sentence. And he was sentenced because of possession of a loaded handgun with intent to endanger a life in August of 2014 and he was handed a seven-year prison sentence. However, however, he gave evidence saying that he was forced to own it. That's the gun. After being told to get into a car with three other men, the sentencing judge accepted that he was not a ringleader in the crime and the sentencing judge also said that it's pretty plain that he may have been exploited by one of the others. He has not committed any subsequent crimes since 2014 and before that. He was never in any problems. He had never had any run-ins with the law or anything. Three guys rolled up, coerced him to get into a car with them, and he got caught with a loaded gun. Numerous psychological and other assessments have been done on him and they have all identified that he has significant learning disabilities not just a little learning disabilities but significant learning disabilities he struggles with basic reading and writing and he is unable to live independently i guess because of his decision making skills he also has a congenital 
heart defect as well. A prison psychiatrist found that he was easily led and he was vulnerable to exploitation. Now, I'm telling you, autism and all this other stuff, um, vulnerable to exploitation, again, this comes into play, him wanting to be a part of, right? So they'll usually follow through and peer pressure is a hell of a thing. So when people start to peer pressure them, they normally fall to the peer pressure because they want to belong so badly, you know? It's, it's, it's a sad situation to look at for him. Now, the judge who ruled in his favor found that he would struggle to survive. The judge said, quote, unquote, he would struggle to survive in Jamaica due to his learning disabilities. And I am not satisfied that he would be capable of even living independently there. His size and his learning disabilities renders him liable to bullying and to abuse he is a vulnerable person these are all words from the judge i guess he is small in stature and then he has this severe learning disability along with his heart issues and so on and so forth so the judge is like i don't know man to me he's going to be a victim he's not going to be able to make it there on his own his distraught mother now is trying to get his deportation halted she says that her son calls her many times each day from the detention center where he is being held in a state of panic and confusion. People would be shocked to know that human beings are being treated this way and my son is being treated this way, she said. People with mental health problems, they need to be free. Being in a detention center would be very bad for him. He has always lived with me and he is unable to live by himself. I feel like a fish out of water without him. He's my son. Now he's being detained. And I don't even want to go into the kitchen to do any cooking because I'm always cooking for him. And he's not here. So I feel like there isn't even any reason to cook is what she's saying. She added that she believes that he did not fully understand his predicament. And he was struggling to eat regularly without her support. He was stressed. He was bewildered by his stay. She said with his reminiscent of his prison sentence, throughout which he struggled enormously, trying to figure out why am I locked up, asking when am I going home, these kind of things. Deportation flights to Jamaica are particularly controversial because some of those due to fly are Windrush descendants. Many have been here since they were child children in their childhood um, stages. And they no longer have links with the country of their birth. Nothing in Jamaica. Family members they might have known have passed on. They're an older generation. You know, that's the natural process of life. You get old, you die. Um, younger generation, they have no touch, no in-touch links with. So they will essentially then be going home to a complete strange country. Numbers on the last four Jamaican deportation flights have decreased steadily from 17 to 13 to 7 and then to 4. And this, thanks to these advocates and these attorneys who are coming in and are saying, hey, hey, you can, this person is not getting due process. You can't, you can't put this person on this flight. This is wrong. We have legal grounds for this person to not be deported right now if you are not lucky enough to have an attorney who is going to go at your case aggressively and to step in at the last minute some people the flight has been halted as the plane was about to start rolling down the tarmac before takeoff can you imagine the anxieties people would be shocked to know that human beings are treated this way well you know what I'm not shocked at all. We're talking about the British, okay? And you're, if you're Jamaican or you're from the Caribbean, you have a storied history with the British. So we're not shocked that human beings, especially those who are challenged, are being treated in a certain manner, especially being that they are of a certain race. You understand what I'm saying? Read between the lines, right? Now, 
his mom is over here stressing out. She's saying that she doesn't really think he understands his full situation. The whole time he was locked up in prison, he was uh, wondering when he was going to go home. He thought he was on some long stay somewhere. And he, okay, I'm done now. I want to go home now. And, you know, um, I mean, damn, man. He's currently being held in an immigration removal center and has said that if he was sent to Jamaica, he would not be able to leave the airport because he would have nowhere to go. Guess what? There's nobody in Jamaica. I've, I've recently traveled to Jamaica again, and I've come in through both the Donald Sangster and the Norman Manley International Airport, and there are nobody, there are no people that are living in the airport, so he would have to leave the airport, but this is his logic of reasoning. Well, I guess I'm going to have to just stay in the airport. Damn. Now, in the year ending September 2021, the number of forced removal were at a record low, 2,380. A 35% yearly drop, and in 2004, the Home Office deported 21,425 people, but there are indications that the Home Office is trying to boost their numbers now that the pandemic travel restrictions have been lifted. They want to get back to a number like 21,425. Damn. Offshorings to Rwanda and the first deportation charter flights to Iraq for many years taken place at the end of this month. Karen Doyle of Movement for Justice, which is campaigning against the deportation of Jamaica, uh, to Jamaica, said that a judge rightly concluded that this man could not survive in Jamaica. Anyone spending 15 minutes with him could clearly see that. This is not a person that it requires a whole lot of investigation to see that you are actually sending him to death. She added that the Home Office would relentlessly pursue this vulnerable man is testament to their cruelty. When Priti Patel talks about deporting dangerous criminals, we know that there are people like Osemi Brown, like this man, and countless others just like them who go through this torture. A Home Office spokesperson said that under the UK Border Act of 2007, the government is obligated to seek to remove non-British citizens that were convicted of an offense in the United Kingdom and sentenced to 12 months or more of imprisonment. So if you're convicted and you get like six months, then you are flying below the radar and more than likely they won't come get you. But if you are over 12 months, more than likely, they're coming to get you. Remember, I said, their numbers went down, right? So their numbers went down to 2,300 and something uh, deportation numbers. Their numbers before that was 12,000 and something, and they're trying to get back to the 12,000 and something deported annually. Of course, not all to Jamaica. We're talking about being deported to other countries as well as Jamaica, but they remove people a lot from the UK. Each case is considered on its individual merit, and we will consider any evidence that suggests that removal is not appropriate carefully before removal action is taken. This is what they normally say. But the sad thing is, they see these cases, but they don't. They claim that they actually do uh, pay special attention to these cases and treat them individually, but they don't. In closing this video, I'm going to say this. If this brother has severe mental issues or severe learning disability issues plus heart issues, Jamaica is not the place for him to be because medical, like the whole medical system in Jamaica, in comparison to, say, the UK or the US, it's like non-existent. Okay, where is he going to get proper treatment for his heart issues from? Where is he going to sleep? Where is he going to get clean clothes on a daily basis and his meals? He has been dependent on his mom and his sister his entire life, from birth until now. And when he wasn't with them, he was in prison for the gun that he was caught with. 
therefore dependent on the prison system and then back to his mom. So he has never lived on his own before. How is he going to survive in Jamaica? Here is another person who I think should not be sent to Jamaica. Leave your comments in the comment section below. Tell me what you think about this one and I'll catch you on the next video. It's SoFlo TV. I'm out. Peace.